Hey, gorgeous. Welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, which features interviews with inspiring women entrepreneurs from around the world. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now, without further ado, I'll hand you over to your host, Holly Wharton. Hello, and welcome to the Ready to Bloom podcast, episode 115. I'm Amanda Cook from the Wellpreneur podcast, and I'll be your host today while I interview your usual host, Holly Wharton. As you know, Holly's the founder of Ready to Bloom, and she works with women entrepreneurs to create the mindset that they need to build a successful, sustainable business. Hi, Holly. Hello. <laughs> it's so fun to flip the tables a little <laughs> bit and, and interview you on your own show. So I I'm love it. I'm honored you chose me. Um, So Holly, as your listeners might know, you've actually made a big shift in your business in the past year, and you used to focus more on social media, and now you're working more on entrepreneurial mindset. So I thought maybe we could start off by just if you could talk a little bit about how you've made that transition and and what you're doing now. Yes. Well, now it's, um, it's been about nine months since I made that transition, nine or 10 months. Towards the end of last year, I started getting the feeling that things were changing in my business, but I wasn't quite sure what it was. And I'd done a lot of training in Psych K, which is the technique that I use now. But I'd done all this training for personal use, just to get over my own kind of fears and blocks and limiting beliefs and stuff that was holding me back in life. And so I'd been training in that, and I'd seen how my life had changed so much with that. And I knew it had to kind of become part of my business. And I'd added it to my social media business in the sense that I was working with women entrepreneurs to help them with social media on the technical side of things. But then I started working with them on the fears and blocks and the stuff that was stopping them from actually taking action to build their online platform using social media. So lots of the women that I worked with had fears of visibility, they had fears around technology, just mindset stuff that was holding them back. So I'd added that to the social media business, Socially Holistic. And I used to say that I helped people with social media from the inside and the outside. So both the technical stuff and the mindset stuff. And so I'd made that transition, but then I still felt like there was something more that needed to be changed. And I just had no clue. And so last year, I think it was towards the end of the summer in August, I traveled to the U.S. to do the health and wellness training in Site K. And it was after that that I realized Site K had to be a bigger part of my business, but I still didn't have... Um, the clarity on exactly what the heck I was going to do with it. So last fall, I think it was around September, October, finally got the clarity that I was just going to quit social media and still work with the same group of clients, my ideal client base, which is women entrepreneurs and kind of heart-centered, purpose-driven businesses. But I was just going to help them with the mindset stuff using this technique that I use, social media. And it was towards the end of last year, I think it was just before Christmas, that my web guy launched the website, the new website, um, Ready to Bloom. And and that was it. I had made the transition and I just let go of social media. And I actually ended up killing both of my old websites, both travel publishing and social uh, socially holistic. So... Awesome. That's really exciting. That's so, it's, it's such a big moment when they finally click publish on the yes. website and it goes live. Yeah. Yes. So, so for people that aren't familiar, can you just tell us a little bit about what Site K is? Yeah. Site K is... It's one of those techniques that's just not very well known. It's been around for about 25 years. It was created in the U.S. by a guy called Rob Williams. And the people who have heard of Psyche have usually heard about it through Bruce Lipton, the guy who wrote Biology of Belief. He's a big fan of Psyche, and he's written a lot about how Psyche can really help you change your beliefs. Um, So what it does is it's a technique that works at the subconscious level to reprogram beliefs into your mind. So it can reprogram, you know, help you release fears and blocks and limiting beliefs and reprogram positive beliefs or enhancing beliefs into your subconscious mind. So it works at that really deep level in the way that NLP does or EFT. But I find it so much more kind of simple and effective than anything else that I've learned before because I've trained as an NLP practitioner. Don't use it today just because I find it kind of complicated and it just didn't never clicked with me the way it's like K does. Um, and EFT, I used to do tapping. I love tapping, but I just found that this is the thing for me. It's the, the technique that I most enjoy using and it can be used for all kinds of things. I'm going to be, you know, I mostly work with clients on business mindset, but as I said, I've done the health and wellness training. And so I've used it to even get rid of health issues such as asthma, allergies, things like that, that were a you know, big problem for me before. So it just, you know, works by changing beliefs at that very, very deep level. And it actually creates new neural pathways, new neural networks in your brain. 
Cool. And is it something that you can do? It's a remote therapy, right? So you can do it by talking rather than actually having to see somebody in person? Yes. So I see a very small amount of my clients in person. I see most of my clients on Skype. And the way I do that, because the K insight K is, is stands for kinesiology. So it, there's muscle testing involved in, in the process. So muscle testing for people that haven't heard of it is it's a process where usually someone will kind of press down on your arm as you resist. And if you're saying a, um, a truthful statement, such as, my name is Holly, your arm will be able to resist. But if you say uh, a statement that is not truthful, such as, my name is George, your arm will go down. Now, there are different ways of muscle testing, but the important thing is that it works to really tap into your subconscious mind so you can speak directly to it and find out whether or not you're holding these beliefs. So well, that's another thing that I really love about Psyche because you get the clear physical response of as to whether or not you hold this belief or whether or not you do because we also muscle test at the end of the process to check and make sure that you now hold that new belief. So when I'm seeing someone on Skype, I obviously don't have their arm in the room with me, so I go into a process called surrogation, which creates kind of an energetic link up between me and the person that I'm working with, and that way I can do the muscle testing for them. Cool. I, I've, done some, I've done some muscle testing myself, and it's so interesting to tap into that wisdom of what your body knows that you might not consciously be aware of. Exactly. And that's the thing that people find so amazing, because oftentimes they'll come to me with, say, affirmations that they've been doing. And they'll say, you know, I've been doing these affirmations for a month, so I just want to test these and make sure I do believe them. And I would say 99% of the time, they show up weak for the statements, because at the conscious level, they do believe them, because they've been doing these affirmations. But they didn't seep into the subconscious level. So their subconscious mind is still saying, nope, I don't believe that. So it's, it's so easy to tap into that wisdom and change the beliefs. So in the case of women entrepreneurs, say that we have, you know, we've been doing affirmations about how, you know, my life is so abundant or it's very easy to get clients or, you know, I'm very calm, whatever it is that you're, you're trying to, to manifest in your business. So how does this actually show up or what do you often see with clients where you can detect that actually they haven't absorbed these messages and and there's still something going on? Well, before I have my first session with a client, I send them a questionnaire to get an idea of what it is that they want in their business and what they're actually experiencing. So, you know, what do you currently have that you, you're not happy with? And usually it's, you know, I don't have a steady stream of clients. I'm, I'm afraid of being visible. I'm afraid of doing videos. So lots of fears around taking actions that will open them up and make their business grow. So it's just a matter of getting them in the right mindset so that they can start taking those actions to build their business. Right. And then by doing that psyche process, you're mm-hmm. shifting those beliefs and then suddenly they feel more comfortable putting themselves yes. out. Is that what you're saying? Yes, exactly. That's awesome. Exactly. So I've had a lot of clients that have come to me and said, you know, for example, I know I should have a YouTube channel. I know it could be really powerful for my business. I want to do it, but I just, I hate looking at myself on video and I'm scared to do it. And so, you know, just in a matter of minutes, because psyche takes between two and five minutes to change a single belief. In a matter of minutes, we can program new beliefs into your subconscious. And I've seen clients just go away and the following week or a couple of weeks afterwards, they've got, you know, a thriving YouTube channel with new videos and they're just speaking naturally to camera. They don't have to script it. They can just turn on the, the, the camera and just start talking. So things like that. And you can see really, really big changes quite quickly with Psyche. So I, I love it because it's just quick and easy and it's forward focused because you're focusing on what you do want rather than what you don't want. Yeah. And so you can just get great results. Really. Oh, that's really exciting. Let's talk a little bit about entrepreneur mindset, because I know that's where your primary focus is now in your business. Where do you think, like, what are some of the mistakes that entrepreneurs make around mindset? What are some of the mindsets that really trip them up? So many things. So a lot of it is around self-confidence, self-belief. It's like they have this vision, they want to, you know, create this thriving business, but they just don't believe they can do it deep down. Um, lots of fears around visibility, people just, you know, knowing that they have to get themselves out there so that their ideal clients can see them, whether it's online or offline or whatever, but they're not taking the actions, whether it's social media or public speaking or whatever it is, because they're afraid of putting themselves out there in a big way. So I would say those are kind of the top things, self-confidence, self-esteem, and then visibility. Mm. Now, I know we're, you know, we, we learned so much during our entrepreneurial journeys because really running your own business is like the best self-help ever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so 
can you share with us, like, is that something that you've experienced too? Have you confronted those types of challenges in, in running your own business and how have you overcome them? Uh, yes, most definitely. I mean, my first business, as some listeners will know from times that I've mentioned it before, I started in 1999 in the hospitality industry. And I had no business experience, no hospitality experience. And so I was constantly, you know, being in the, you know, in these situations where I had no idea what to do or how to handle them. And I just learned as I was going. And I learned so much about business and marketing and particularly online marketing in that business. But really the big learnings for me came when I set out as a solopreneur and started, you know, building my coaching business and then my social media businesses. Because, that was when all of my personal stuff came up because the previous business, it was a, it was a big organization. There were lots of other people working there. In a way, I was the face of the business, but it wasn't just me. It was this, this organization. Whereas as a solopreneur, it was pretty much just me. I mean, I've got, you know, a team of people that help me, you know, whether it's with, you know, VA stuff, that kind of thing. But the face of the business was really me. And that was where I just started feeling like, oh. You know, my marketing stuff that I had all the experience, all the practical knowledge, it was really hard for me to put into place for myself, for my, this business as a solopreneur, whether it was, you know, the coaching business or the social media business. So for me, it was all about, you know, self-confidence, self-esteem, visibility, and just putting myself out there and because it can be scary. And that's why I think I attract clients that have these similar issues. And I use Psyche to get through this, both personal issues and business issues. I really used it a lot to help myself get over this stuff. And I saw the big changes that I got, which is why I realized my business needed to be, you know, involve more Site K because it's so powerful and so few people know about it. Mm -hmm. And when you have something like that, that's been so transformational for you, it's like, you feel like it's your duty to bring it out to the world yes. because it can help other people too. So yes. that's great. So what are some of your top tips for how people listening can really transform their business mindset? Well, the important thing is first of all, to become aware of what's going on for you. So a lot of the work that I've been doing now is helping people become aware of, first of all, what is the big vision that they have for their business? And secondly, what's the stuff that comes up for them when they think about, you know, taking action towards that vision? So first of all, it's become aware of the current stuff that's holding you back, whether it's fears, blocks, limiting beliefs, whatever. When I first trained in Psych K, I did the basic workshop a couple of years ago, and I did so much work with myself every single day using this technique that I just learned. And what I did was, as I was working on my business throughout the day, whenever anything came up to me, I would just write it down. I had this um, notebook and I would write down, you know, say I had a session with my coach and she wanted me to get in touch with joint venture partners. So I'd write that down. I'm so scared about approaching people, you know, for doing a joint venture, that kind of thing. Or I would be about to set up Facebook ads and I would think, oh, I'm so scared about people that don't know me seeing me and my Facebook ads and what are they going to think and blah, blah, blah. And I would just make notes all day of all the stuff that was coming up for me. And then at the end of the day, I would use Psyche to change these beliefs. And so the first part is awareness, because you've got to start noticing and recording what's coming up for you that's stopping you from taking the action you need to take in your business. That's absolutely the most important thing. That's really, that's such a powerful point because I think a lot of people, when they have a little, you know, you feel that thing in your gut, like that resistance, like, mm -hmm. oh, I don't want to do that. And then people will instantly go into like beating themselves up about it. Yes. Like, oh, I'm not good enough. I'll never do that. Why am I scared? Yes. I'm, you know, I'll never be, but rather you're saying like, have the mindset of like, oh, look at that. I'm feeling resistance. Isn't yeah. that interesting? Mm -hmm. What's going on here? And I think just doing that shift Yes. will help people make progress because it's like you're not identifying with the fear. You're just kind of observing it and exactly. keeping going. And you're having curiosity about it. So you're looking at it, you're thinking, okay, so look, what's going on here? What else is going on here? Is there anything else going on here? And just recording it, writing it down, you know, looking at it from a neutral perspective. There's nothing wrong with you. This stuff comes up for everyone. Everyone's stuff is a little bit different, which is why you need to figure out what your stuff is so that you can change it. Awesome. So the first tip is if awareness. people want to shift yeah. their mindset, yeah, be yeah. aware. Yeah. Yeah. Awareness and then recording the stuff. Because if you don't write it down, you're going to forget. We don't like this stuff. It's scary. It's uncomfortable. A lot of people have the tendency to think, oh, I'm just not going to look at that. I'm just going to sweep it under the rug and just move on with my day and do something else. I'll answer a few emails and then life will go on. 
So awareness, become aware of it, and then write it down. Keep a record of what's going on for you. And then the third step is go back and, you know, find whatever technique works for you. So for me, it's Psyche. I love Psyche. Other people love NLP. Other people love hypnotherapy, EFT. There's so many things out there. So you need to find whatever technique is right for you and then either train in it yourself so that you can do it yourself or work with someone else. And I have to say that while I'm so grateful to have this technique that I can use with myself, and I do use Psych K on a weekly basis with myself, um, I also find it really useful to work with other people because it can be so useful to have someone else kind of pick apart the issue for you. And I think one of the most useful things that I have in my toolkit is the fact that I trained as a coach years ago, and I can have the conversation with someone and really help them dig down deep to the core of what's going on for them. So it can be so easy to kind of just get caught up in the basic beliefs. You know, I have this fear, I have that fear, I have the other fear. Now you can work on those, but if you dig down a little bit deeper, you might find one core belief that when you change that, you're going to shift everything else. Um, and I'm very much about getting to the core, working on that core issue, because it's such a quicker way to work with people. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I think it's really amazing because you don't always realize, like if it's a limiting belief, you actually don't realize that you have it yeah. because to you, it's your normal. Exactly. So, <laughs> so people out there listening, like if you feel like, oh, well, that's fine, but I don't really, I'm not making a lot of money in my business, but I don't have a limiting belief around it. I'm just not, you know. I'm not doing my marketing right yeah, or something. Exactly. Actually, a lot of times you'll be surprised. I've done a lot of work with EFT and you do come across these beliefs and you just think, wow, I thought that's what everybody thought. Yeah, exactly. And it's, and it's not true. And when you clear that, it's extremely powerful. Yeah, or worse yet, you think that that's just a fact. Like that's just the way things mm -hmm. are. You know, you've got to work hard and you've got to hustle and things have to be difficult. Not necessarily. I mean, if you believe that, yes, that's how it's going to be. But so many things are beliefs and not straight fact. I love that idea. What if it doesn't have to be hard? What if it can be easy? Exactly. And so a lot of the belief statements that I work on creating with people has to do with it being easy and effortless to get clients, easy and effortless to have a steady stream of clients, that kind of thing. And, you know, marketing is easy and effortless. I, I just, I love those words, easy and effortless, because if you believe that it can be, then it is. Cool. So Holly, I'm wondering, have you had any mentors in your business or are there any, any women in business that really inspire you? Yes. I was just thinking about this the other day. So many people that, you know, I've worked with some coaches that I just have been amazing. I and mean, I was so, first of all, I'd have to say Natalie Sisson. Um, I worked with her one-on-one -on -one coaching a few years ago and she's someone that I just, I love I love her business. I love how she's created her business, which is really, you know, just a thriving community in a really short time. And, you know, I love her podcast. Her podcast was the first podcast I ever listened to, The Suitcase Entrepreneur. And she was actually the inspiration for me starting my own podcast. So definitely Natalie Sisson. Catherine Watkin, who's been a uh, guest on this podcast a couple of times. Catherine and I trained as coaches together back in 2011. And since then, her business has completely taken off. She got clear on her niche very early, which is sales training and coaching. Um, and she went on to create a really successful online program, um, which is called Get More Clients Saying Yes. And she's all about sales in the sense of having a sales conversation. So she's not about closing the sale. She's not about using, you know, NLP selling techniques. She's about having, teaching you to have a conversation with your potential client so that you can help them come to the decision as to whether or not they want to work with you, whether or not this is the best time for them to work with you, and having it be very much about a conversation between two equals, not someone who's trying to rope someone into, you know, your latest coaching package or, or whatever. Um, so I absolutely love Catherine and I love the way she's just built her business over the years. And now she's got um, a business mentoring program in addition to her sales coach, um, sales training. And I just, I love what she's done with her business in a very, very short period of time. So Catherine's the second person. Third person would be Leonie Dawson. I love Leonie so much because She's so wacky and creative and different, and she doesn't have fears around expressing that. She expresses her, her quirkiness in such an open way, and I just have so much respect for that. I love it when people just let their natural personality shine through online, and I love the way she's built such a you know, 
thriving community online in just a few years. So she's, she's another person that I absolutely love. So Mm, great recommendations. Yeah. And one question I always ask during my interviews is, is there a favorite book? And in this case, maybe a book about mindset that you could recommend to everyone. Oh, wow. That's an excellent question. I've been reading so much this year. It's been amazing. Every year I kind of set myself a a goal on Goodreads as to how many books I'm going to read. And this year I completely surpassed it. And so I had to uh, increase my goal. But the interesting thing is I haven't been reading that much as far as business books this year. I've been reading so much more fiction and and other things. So let's see. Or like an all-time favorite. All-time favorite. Ah. Or if not, I'll give one. <laughs> yeah. Why don't you give one and, and, and I'll Okay. Yeah. My very favorite mindset book, uh, business yeah. mindset, is The Big Leap by Gay Hendricks. Oh, yes. That's a fantastic book. Oh, I just love that one. And I read it probably every year. And it's basically – and every time I read it, I get more out of it. Yeah. And it's just basically that there you hit the ceiling of success that you don't even notice that you're hitting against it. And then you have to make the big leap to break through to the other level. Yeah. And it's one of those books you can just go back to again and again and – it always gives you something new. Thank you for reminding me of that book because I do need to read it again. And that just reminded me of another woman entrepreneur that I wanted to mention but didn't and who also wrote another one of my favorite mindset books, which is Denise Duffield Thomas um, and her Get Rich Lucky Bitch book. I absolutely love, as do I love her boot camp. Um, so yeah, definitely Denise Duffield Thomas. Yeah, I second Denise. That's yeah. it's a great book. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. So I guess everyone knows where to find you, but would you like to just (laughs) remind us how to get in touch with you if people would like to try Psych K or work with you or learn more about what you do? Yeah, definitely. It's readytobloom.com and that's ready, the number two, bloom.com. And then, you know, I'm on pretty much all the social networks as kind of a leftover from when I was doing my social media business. So I'm on, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I mostly use for personal stuff, uh, LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, of course. Pinterest, YouTube, still building up my YouTube channel, Google Plus, all that good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks so much, Holly. Thank you. And thanks everyone for listening. Remember to visit readytobloom.com slash 115 for the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to the Ready to Bloom podcast with your host, Holly Wharton. You can find more information about today's guests, including links for topics that were discussed at readytobloom.com. That's ready, the number two, bloom.com. And if you enjoyed this episode, please remember to head over to iTunes and leave us a quick review of this podcast. Thank you so much.